Ever wonder what Bitcoin actually is, beyond the hype and the headlines? Today, we're pulling back the curtain on the original cryptocurrency, the one that started it all. Bitcoin wasn't just invented, it was unleashed. In 2009, a mysterious person or group known as Satoshi Nakamoto introduced it to a world still reeling from the 2008 financial crisis. Trust in banks and governments was shattered. People were looking for an alternative. Bitcoin was that alternative a new kind of money, free from the control of any central authority. It's governed by math, code, and a global community. So, what is it, really? At its heart, Bitcoin is a decentralized digital asset. Think of it like digital cash you can send directly to anyone, anywhere in the world, without needing a bank or a credit card company to approve the transaction. Unlike dollars or euros, it's not printed by a government. Instead, it runs on a massive peer-to-peer -peer network of computers. Every single transaction is recorded on a public ledger called the blockchain, which is transparent and can't be changed. This design completely removes the middleman. To use Bitcoin, you need a wallet. This wallet doesn't hold your coins like a physical wallet holds cash, it holds your private keys. These keys are secret cryptographic codes that prove you own your Bitcoin and allow you to spend it. There are hot wallets, which are software apps connected to the internet, making them super convenient for daily use. And there are cold wallets, which are physical hardware devices kept offline, offering the best security against online threats. Your private key is like the master key to your digital vault. If you lose it, it's gone forever. There's no customer service to call. This personal responsibility is a core part of Bitcoin's philosophy, and it's why learning about security is so important. Let's walk through how a transaction works. When you send Bitcoin, you use your private key to digitally sign the transaction. This signature is broadcast to the entire network. Thousands of computers, called nodes, then verify that you have enough funds and that the transaction is valid. Once verified, your transaction is bundled with others into a block. This block is then cryptographically linked to the previous one, forming an unbreakable chain the blockchain. Because each block is chained to the last, the entire history of transactions is permanent and immutable. You can't reverse or tamper with a confirmed transaction. This is what people mean when they say Bitcoin is trustless. You don't have to trust a person or a company. You trust the underlying mathematics and the network itself. Now, let's talk about one of Bitcoin's most powerful features, its scarcity. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence, that number is hard-coded into its protocol. This makes Bitcoin fundamentally different from traditional currencies, which governments can print at will, potentially diluting the value of your savings. This program scarcity is why many call Bitcoin digital gold. Like gold, it's rare and can't be created out of thin air. The supply of new Bitcoin is predictable. It enters circulation through a process called mining, and the rate of new supply gets cut in half roughly every four years in an event called the halving. But unlike gold, Bitcoin is incredibly easy to divide. One Bitcoin can be split into 100 million smaller units called satishes, making it practical for everything from multi-million dollar deals to buying a coffee. So what is this mining I just mentioned? Mining is the engine that keeps the Bitcoin network running. Miners use powerful computers to solve incredibly complex mathematical puzzles. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add the next block of transactions to the blockchain. As a reward, they receive newly created Bitcoin and the transaction fees from that block. This process is called proof of work and it requires a massive amount of energy. Critics often point to Bitcoin's energy consumption as a major flaw. However, Supporters argue this energy is what secures a global, trillion-dollar financial network. They also highlight that a growing portion of mining is powered by renewable energy or energy that would otherwise be wasted, like flared natural gas from oil fields. The sustainability debate is definitely one of the most intense and important conversations happening around Bitcoin's future. If you've followed Bitcoin at all, you know about its famous price volatility. It has journeyed from being worth pennies to tens of thousands of dollars per coin, with dramatic peaks and valleys along the way. For some, this volatility is a sign of risk. For others, it's an opportunity. 
we've seen major institutional investors, hedge funds, and even public companies like Tesla add Bitcoin to their balance sheets, using it as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation. For everyday people, Bitcoin presents both risk and reward. The price swings can be stressful, but its potential as a long-term store of value has convinced millions around the globe to become part of its network. And Bitcoin is no longer just a theoretical idea. It's being used in the real world every day. El Salvador made it legal tender, allowing citizens to use it for everything from groceries to taxes. Major payment platforms like PayPal and Block now allow users to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin. And millions of people use it for remittances sending money back home to family in other countries without paying the high fees charged by traditional services. In nations struggling with hyperinflation, where the local currency becomes worthless, Bitcoin has become a lifeline, a way for people to protect their savings from being wiped out. One of the most revolutionary aspects of Bitcoin is its transparency. The entire blockchain is public. Anyone can go online and use a blockchain explorer to view every transaction that has ever happened. You can see how much Bitcoin is in any wallet address at any time. This transparency builds trust because no one can secretly print more Bitcoin or manipulate the ledger. At the same time, transactions are pseudonymous. Wallet addresses aren't directly linked to real-world identities. This creates a fascinating balance between public accountability and personal privacy, sparking important conversations about financial freedom and surveillance in our digital world. Of course, Bitcoin isn't perfect. It faces its share of challenges. Users need to be vigilant against scams and phishing attacks. Exchanges can get hacked. And as we mentioned, losing your private keys means losing your funds forever. Regulators worldwide are still figuring out how to approach it. Is it a currency, a commodity like gold, a security like a stock? Different countries have different answers, creating a complex and evolving legal landscape. Another challenge has been scalability. The main Bitcoin network can only handle a small number of transactions per second. But brilliant solutions like the Lightning Network are being built on top of Bitcoin. The Lightning Network allows, for instant, near-free payments that are later settled on the main blockchain, solving the speed issue for everyday transactions. Beyond just being a new kind of money, Bitcoin has started a global conversation about freedom, individual sovereignty, and what money even is. It offers a path to financial inclusion for the billions of people who do and have access to traditional banking. It provides a censorship-resistant tool for activists and journalists in repressive countries to receive funding. Bitcoin's invention also sparked the creation of thousands of other cryptocurrencies and the entire field of blockchain technology, leading to innovations like decentralized finance, or DeFi, and NFTs. The ripple effect is reshaping our digital world. Bitcoin has been declared dead by critics hundreds of times over the past decade. Yet, with every market cycle, its network grows stronger and its adoption deepens. Its future will be shaped by ongoing debates about regulation, energy use, and its ultimate role in the global financial system. But one thing is undeniable. Bitcoin has already proven that a global, decentralized, and non-governmental form of money is possible. It's more than just an investment, it's a technological revolution. Whether you see it as a speculative asset, digital gold, or the foundation for a new financial future, its impact is here to stay. Thanks for joining me on this deep dive into Bitcoin. If you found this helpful and want to learn more about the fascinating world of crypto, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next video. See you next time.